you hear me back there, Ms. Fontaine? Good? All right, students, good morning. Welcome to the first annual LHS Harmon Black History Month celebration. Let's give a round of applause. Students, I'm going to talk for about two minutes, and then I'm going to turn it over to our AAA members who have organized this entire program today. Students, just real quick, I want you to think, and I talked about this this morning on the announcements, how fortunate we are to go to a school as diverse as we are, where we can all celebrate each other's ancestors, um, the history of our lives and the history of our families and not only celebrate it but also respect each other. You know we had a big chin festival the other night for our students from Burma. We have a huge celebration set up for Cinco de Mayo that Cesar Plata is going to be putting on and we have this celebration today for Black History Month. So just kind of keep that in perspective about how fortunate we are that we get to celebrate all these things. Because when I was in school, the teachers were in school, there were a lot of things that we did not celebrate that we should have been celebrating. So think about that. Think how fortunate we all are to live in a country and a school district where we can celebrate things like this today. Just a couple quick announcements. Students who have um, third period at Maine, um, if the program's still going on, as far as the musical portion, we're gonna dismiss you quietly at the end to get your lunches and go to the buses. Um, everybody else will sit tight. Those of you who have a lunch at the end will go to a lunch. You'll stay here for a lunch. Those of you have, who normally have B lunch will go to your third period class at that time. Okay? We have several guests here, parents here. Um, we want to welcome them. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Jameer Carr, our student body president, to introduce our guest. Jameer. Good morning, Palmers. How are you guys doing today? Oh, y'all can do better than that. You see, we got a class, and I'm going to ask again. How are we doing today? Yeah. All right. So my name is Jameer Carr. I'm a friend and former president of Harmony. So we have a guest here today, and her name is Haji. I mean, Haley, Haley Baji. Excuse me. And she'll be speaking with us towards the end of the program. But first, to get everything started, we have Anissa Tippins, Anessa Tippins, giving us a warm welcome, Anessa. Good morning, LHS Harmony and guests. Welcome to our program. We hope you enjoy the music, the speeches, and the atmosphere of the celebration as we reflect on Black history, past, present, and future. Thank you for coming and enjoy the program. Thank you, Anissa. Right. Next, we have Dominique Richard giving us the occasion. Please join me 
and celebrate the outstanding contributions that African Americans have made to this society. Those who previously followed that belief are, are coerced to believe the opposite. 
It's never one person that changes the world. It's always a group of people that has to get together to start a revolution. We don't need violence to create harmony. Nonviolent resistance is the key to tranquility. Using Dr. King's philosophies and ideals, we can finally become what Dr. King fought for. We can become one world living the dream. Now, last but least, we have Hadi Baji. <laughs> Excuse me. We have Hadi Baji. Baji. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she just, she's a senior class. She's a senior class president of AAA, and she's just been accepted in Western Kentucky University. At, at, Hello. <laughs> okay, my name is Hattie Baji. September 15, 1993, I was born in Gambia, West Africa. Does anybody know where Africa is? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And is Africa a continent or a country? All right, there we go. So I moved here, I moved here a couple of years ago to America, and I came to Louisville High School North, which is an absolutely wonderful experience. When I moved over to Maine, I joined the speech and debate program there. And I started off as a debater, Lincoln Douglas debate. I competed in different events. But eventually, over, over a period of time, I realized that my heart wasn't into it, you know? Because I missed home. I love the traditions and the cultures that we have in Africa. And being that Black History Month we are celebrating, we cannot celebrate it without remembering where it started. And it all started in the motherland, in Africa. And so that's what I was missing. It was an empty void that I had. So my sophomore year, I decided to write a speech. And I didn't know what my topic was going to be about. But you know what? I said I'm going to do something that's really close to me, Africa. And not only Africa, but the stereotypes of Africa. I came to America, and I tell you, it was one of the craziest experiences when I first came. Uh, questions like, so did you live in a house or a hut? Or you know, did I walk around naked? Or did I have food? to make a speech about that, and I ended up doing really good with it. I uh, went to nationals uh, for different tournaments. I placed semis or I placed first place, depending on the ter tournament that it was. So this speech is very close to me, and I thought I would share it with you all today so that we can truly celebrate Black History Month and learn about where it all started, okay? Embossed little trees and polka dots can hide what's in the box. 
the same way stereotypes conceal the truth. In 1922, journalist, media critic, and American philosopher Walter Lippmann described these stereotypes as the fortress of our tradition, a way to hide behind the defenses so we can continue to feel ourselves safe in the position we occupy. Much like the opaque nature of gift wrap, stereotypes are packaged to confuse us. The position behind all these considerations are not that the stereotypes are wrong, but who controls and defines them and what interests they serve. Now we oohed and out long enough about the gift wrap. Let's rip it off and discard those layers of decoration. Let's open up the box of reality. Sadly, what is called a single story can hide the reality of Africa and the authenticity of long-held beliefs. The single story method of communication encourages and allows the same story to get told over and over and over and over again about a people or a place we do not know firsthand. See, the danger of this technique is that it leads to stereotypes, to have truths, not the full truth. So many Americans think of Africa as being full of hungry, unwashed children, not a place where there are libraries, bus drivers, or even true love. Now, the single story method of communication is the opposite of what Nigerian author Chimanda Adiche believes is the power of stories, where all people get to tell their own stories in their own words. Nigerian author Chimanda Adiche believes in the power of stories, and she warns that only hearing one story or one report about a people or a place can lead to ignorance. Ms. Adiche grew up in middle-class Nigeria, the daughter of a professor. It was not that the American press had lied to her with a single story fallacy. Instead, it was the power of the single story to paint a false picture of the world. She says the truth is revealed by many tales. Adiche illustrates this juxtaposition with a story about coming to the United States and meeting her college roommate. Adiche says her roommate's default position toward her as an African was a kind of patronizing, well-meaning pity. Her roommate had one single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. Adiche's roommate was also shocked to learn that her English was so good and that her favorite tape of tribal music was in fact R&B artist Mariah Carey. Imagine if everything we knew about America or white people came from the films of Spike Lee or James Cameron. There is no way that any single story, any author or film director can present the human fullness of his own people in his own time and in his own place. It would necessarily be limited, making his own people seem limited, strange and exotic to those who know nothing else about them. Now the flimsy paper of the single story is gone. The box of reality is open. The distractions fueled by half-truths and generalizations need to stop. Let us discover the real treasure, which is the continent of Africa. It is time for the 53 nations to celebrate. Sadly, you will not see pictures of me with lip plates and huge oversized gauges in that National Geographic coffee table book your parents may have at home. It's sad that the media talks as if Africa were the four horsemen of the apocalypse. War, famine, plague, and death. I read a piece in The Guardian recently 